Welcome Clarity Coders. Today we have something a little different. I'm going to take one of the users from our Discord who goes by the nickname of Ambush. I'm gonna take his code that he made from our Instagram bot tutorial and walk you through what he's done in this project. Now, before you skip over this video, remember, as a professional developer, a lot of times you're gonna be working with other people's code. So even if an Instagram bot doesn't interest you, and even if you don't care what Ambush did with his project, I wanna show you how you can take someone else's project and adapt and work with that code to fit your needs or debug. Now, before we jump into the code, I wanna make one thing clear. He did an amazing job with this project. He's fixed most of the bugs that we're gonna go over today already. I'm just, I just took a freeze of his project. That way I could do this video with his permission and show you exactly how I step through other people's code. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Now what Ambush has done, he's created an Instagram bot that compares who you're following and who have given you a follow back and gives you the list of people who haven't followed you back yet. First things first, when we see someone else has a project, we're usually gonna grab it from somewhere like GitHub or maybe we'll download it live, something like that. Here is the GitHub link for his project. It will also be in the description below. And how I would normally download this is I would first install Git on my computer. Now, once I have Git installed, I would do something like Git clone and then the project name. Now, in this case, as I mentioned before, he's been working on this project consistently and I had to take a snapshot so I could kind of make this video. So I already have a copy of his project here, but you can download the copy if you would like. So we got his project already in front of us right here. He has a very similar Instagram bot, bot to what we talked about in our previous video. You can catch that link above if you wanna check that out first. And we're gonna go ahead and see what he has going on here. So first things when I open this up, I'm gonna take a peek at the imports and it looks like all stuff that we already have installed. Now, if you haven't, haven't followed along with my other tutorial, you might need to install Selenium. So if you try to run this project and it says it can't find Selenium or it can't find something like that, you can open up a terminal and in that terminal, you can do pip install selenium. I'm gonna assume that you have this installed already if you followed along with the other tutorial. If you haven't, just go ahead and install that in a terminal window. All right, so when I look at someone else's code, I like to start with the first line of code that's actually gonna execute. Now, we're defining functions, we're creating classes, but none of that's actually going to run. We're just gonna define it. So line 10, nothing there. Keep scrolling down. You see he's got a lot of functions inside that class. And now here at the bottom, I get to like my first lines that are going to run here. So when I take a look at this, I immediately see that there is a spot to enter your username and password. Now, all you would have to do here is enter your username. So mine's Clarity Coders. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, I'm trying to get that started, although uh, I don't always, I'm not always the most consistent with my posts, but feel free to follow me there if you'd like. And then you can enter your password here. Now, I'm not gonna enter my plain text password. If you wanna do this project on your own and follow along, that's fine. You can just type it in here. But since I'm gonna make this video, I don't want uh, to have my password hanging out here the entire time. So I'm gonna pull it in from another file. All I've done here is I've created a password.py and inside of that, I create a class that then I can pull my password off of so I don't have to show you guys my password the whole time. So I'm just gonna create a variable called user and inside this password.py, I created a function called user info. And when I initialize that, I get a username and a password set on that variable. So I'm gonna do user and I'm gonna do an import of this class above, so I don't forget. Again, you don't have to do this. You can just type in your username and password if you'd like. The so user info, I'll do user.username and user.password. So I can see here that he has a, what I would consider like a login or initialization, and then he has a following function, a followers function, an unfollowers, a link of unfollowers, and then a unfollow the unfollowers function. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up and take a quick peek before I run this so it doesn't do anything crazy. And I'm gonna minimize this side panel here so we can see a little better. You can see in the initialization, it kind of looks like ours. We have a self.driver equals web chrome, and then he has an ex 
an executable path here. Um, we installed Chrome driver on our path variable, so we actually don't have to specify this at all. Now you can see it's pulling up Instagram. It looks like it's doing some login stuff and clicking. Nothing too special here. We got a following function. So the only thing I'm gonna do before I run this, I'm gonna comment out the unfollow function. I don't wanna unfollow anyone yet. I wanna kinda of think about that and see what it's running first. So I'm gonna comment out that function. The other ones, I say let's give it a try. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this file and just see what happens. You can see it looks very similar to ours. It's logging in fine. It opens up my following and you can see it's logging some information over there. Now it's looking at my followers and now it's logged out the followers as well. So let's start breaking down this information. So if I scroll up, you can see when it started to run the following, it shows that my total accounts loaded are three. Now again, this isn't very descriptive to me. It's a little confusing because I don't know what that total accounts means. When you look at my stats for my Instagram, you can see that that probably is my three following here. And then we have kind of a weird printout below that. So it says there are a total of three accounts loaded that are following, but the accounts loaded list is way longer than that. And you can see it also contains see all suggestions. So there's some weirdness going on here. So that's where I wanna start and look and show you some of the tools that I'd use to break that down. So I knew that there was something up right away with this, some error here. So if I go up to following, and take a look at this. You'll notice here that he grabs the number of following right here. Now, we know that that ends up being correct, right? Because he ends up printing that out in our formatted list below, and that is the correct number that I'm following. And that's the printout right here. But the next part, where we create a linked list, which I believe happens right here, you can see that we got a lot more accounts in that list, including some suggestions and just a plain text that, see, that says see all suggestion. And I can already kind of tell what's happening here. I can see that he's grabbing everything that has an A tag. So that's everything that's a link on that page, which would be uh, people I'm following along with people that Instagram are suggesting I should follow. So we're gonna have to change that. But I wanna pause this code here so we can take a look at it. So if you're using Visual Studio Code or any IDE, you should have a way to add a breakpoint. Now what a breakpoint is, it's gonna pause the code here and give me some information based on what's happening at exactly this point in the code. And then we can kind of step through it from there. So in Visual Studio Code, once you set your breakpoint, you can go over to this run, which is the debugger run, and then I'm gonna push run and debug. It'll ask you how you wanna run it. I'm just gonna run it as a Python file, the, the active current active file. And it takes a little bit longer to load, but you should start to see the same thing happening that you saw before. So it's gonna go through its little login process here. And now you can see that we have a yellow line here and it looks like it's froze over here. So let's take a look at this. We're actually paused on this line. So you can see this line hasn't executed yet. There's no printout that says total accounts loaded. Now what you'll notice up here is that we can actually expand these variables. And this is a current look at the variables in our local function. So it's gonna be inside this function. And you can see we can also see the class itself and what's set on there. So what I wanted to take a look at, you can see above here that he sets an F list. That is all the items with a certain class. Now it just so happens that that class he's grabbing is the people that are following, that I'm following rather. So you can see there's three right here that it's grabbing. And if we look at that F list, you can see that it grabbed those three correctly. So that's perfect. And that's why on the next line, so I'm gonna push this drop down to keep walking through the program, you can see that the number of accounts loaded prints out correctly. Now, and I'm not totally sure why he set it up like this, but he then reaches out and grabs anything on this page with an A element. So if we step over that, and you can see the variable he set here is self.links. So if we look in self, 
and we look in links, you can see here that this is where he's grabbing all the other, the suggestions, the see all, all that sort of things. So we don't want to grab everything there, I don't believe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just continue using this F list he used above to kind of fix this error where it's printing out all those followers. So I'm gonna stop this and we're gonna make our first changes to this program. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this to total accounts following, just so, um, it's just a personal preference, just so it's a little easier for me to read to know what's showing up there. I know my F list already has exactly what I want. So I'm gonna comment this line out. Instead of doing list, list comprehension on self.links, I'm gonna to continue to use the F list that I had above. So I'm gonna make some small changes here. Instead of going over self.links, I'm going to go over my F list. Now I can still call it account name, that's just a variable he picked, so I'm fine with that. And I can still use account name.text, but we're gonna to have to make a change there, I believe. And you can see that he wanted to get rid of all the accounts where the text is blank. Now I don't think ours will have any that are blank now that we made that change, but we'll leave this for right now and we'll test it. And this is going to look a little different than what we expect. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this with a debugger here and we can take a look at what we actually put in this variable. So I'm gonna run and debug one more time. All right, so let's jump in here and take a look at what we did. So we changed self.followingaccounts text. It should be our new list comprehension using the F list. So you can see this is on self. So I'm gonna expand self. And then the variable he named was following underscore accounts underscore text. Let's expand that. And you can see now we only have three. So that's perfect. We solved our issue and now we only have our three that I'm actually following. We do have an issue here. You'll notice it's the entire string with uh, verified the name and following underneath it. And they're separated by slash n. Now, Python has a really good way of breaking up strings that have slash n in them called split line. So every time there's a slash n, it's gonna split that string on that spot and then index the values. So in this first example, don't make fun of me, is uh, Katy Perry, the username would end up in the zero index. Then the one index would be verified and three would be so on and forth, uh, two and so on and so forth after that. The thing we're really interested in is this zero index. That's really the only thing I care to save. So I'm gonna try and grab just that zero index after I split the line. So while I have this up and we can still take a peek at it, I'm gonna do dot split line and it's going to be a list so I can do zero, one, two. And in this case, I just want the username back. So I'm gonna do index zero and that should give us a list of just the username. Then on the next line, see what he's trying to do here. I think he's trying to turn it into a set to get rid of the duplicates. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this debugger. So we don't really need that in our version. We shouldn't have any duplicates anyways, and I don't think this is working as he intended here. So we'll go ahead and move down to the next line. So we're assuming our following underscore accounts underscore text has just the username inside of it now. So now he's creating a link for each one of these users to be saved as the account link. So we wanna move over our object that we created above. So we're gonna do self, dot following underscore accounts underscore text. And our items in here are users. They're not a link anymore. So it's just a user. And then down here, we can actually set our link attribute just like he did. He's setting an href here and then below, he's creating a set of following links. So he's creating a list of links to their pages, the pages of the users that I'm following. So I don't think we need this anymore. So we're gonna cut that out. And now to create the actual link, we got the user that we need up here. So I'm gonna create an F string. And in that F string, I'm gonna use the base Instagram link to a user's profile. So I'll copy and paste that here. This is just the base Instagram URL slash, and then the username afterwards will take you to the user's page. So all we have to do, since we have the username stored in our variable above, we can just paste in that username here. So now it should print out the links correctly and go on from there. So we've changed a bunch of stuff. 
Let's go ahead and run this again and see if we get the correct print printouts here. And I did have a little error here. I'm not gonna edit this out just so we can fix it together. You can see the string object has no attribute split line. If we scroll up here, pardon me, cause it's small here. You can see here that the function is actually split lines, plural. So I'm gonna add back in my S there. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of these. I'm gonna trash this, trash that. And I'm gonna do a fresh run. And silly me, I did comment out a set that he created to store the links in. And I then tried to add items to that set. I see what he's doing now. So he's creating a blank set on our class and then he's adding the links to that set. So let's uncomment that and try and run it again. Messing up Ambush's code. And now you'll notice we did get our three following. And we also have just the three users in that list that we're actually following. And that's as simple as it is. We can go through this and continue to debug and work through these errors in other people's code or our own using the debugger. If you'd like to have your code reviewed, show me what you're working on. Send me some projects, some links, some code, and I would be happy to review that for you. If you have any questions on any project you have, in the programming realm, join this Discord and we can walk you through your problems. We have a lot of people on there 24 seven that can help you with different things. That's how me and Ambush kind of work through this project. Great job, Ambush. Don't forget, he also has been updating this GitHub. So go ahead to the description down below, grab the latest version of this where I'm sure it will be even better than anything we've done here. And until next time, keep coding.